I am Max Kaiser. This is the Kaiser Report. Attention, attention, this is your captain speaking, Stacey Herbert. Max, do you mean this is your captain freaking? <laughs> Bonsai News exclusive, pilot goes berserk. Watching Jim Cramer there and pressing the print button is uh, Ben Bernanke, of course, and he is in charge of our global economy. I thought it was a good uh, analogy to compare this to the JetBlue pilot that uh, went a little bit berserk on the flight to Las Vegas. Yeah, well, what happened? He uh, burst out of the cockpit, running down the aisle naked, looking for his peanuts? Well, Max, passengers subdue screaming JetBlue captain as midair rant diverts flight. A JetBlue flight captain had to be tackled by passengers today after he ran up and down a packed flight screaming about terrorism and Al-Qaeda in a terrifying midair outburst. He was shouting, say your prayers. But it is very similar to how the guy in charge of our global financial monetary system is doing the same thing, and yet the passengers are not tackling the captain, as it were, but they're sitting there calmly as if the plane isn't out of control. Yeah, if Bernanke is the pilot of the American economy, then he's not reading the instruments very well that inform him mm. about what the economy is doing. Yeah. The, the uh, gauge there that says wages is crashing, but he's not doing anything about it. Yeah. The gauge that shows inflation and stuff like energy and uh, food is zooming up to danger red zone. And Bernanke is not doing anything about it. He's blinded or he's with the stewardess or you talk about cheap fares. This guy's got cheek fares. He's running around with his butt cheeks hanging out looking for peanuts all day. You know, exactly, Max, because when a pilot in charge of a plane, when they're flying through a storm, they're supposed to look just at the gauges, and those are telling them the truth because their instinct is telling them something else. And yet, part of the problem is they keep tweaking the gauges to try to tell them the thing they want to hear. Bernanke's flying the economic plane of America, and when the gauges are showing him what he should be doing, making some adjustments to the flaps or doing something correct to actually sustain economic flight, he's just basically taking black paint and, you know, spraying it over that gauge and saying, I don't see that gauge. <laughs> he goes in front of Congress and says, don't look at that gauge. Just believe me what I'm saying. And, of course, he just is there to... Uh, promote the agenda of the central banking authority and the kleptocracy. And as a result, we've got economic Armageddon. In response to this JetBlue situation, we have this headline, JetBlue's CEO Barger. Pilot is a consummate professional. <laughs> so of course- What are you talking about the pilot's a consummate professional? He's shoving cocktail weenies up his sphinx thing. <laughs> Well, of course, he's trying to make sure that the passengers continue to fly JetBlue. And the same thing you see with the financial sector or the mainstream media. They keep on telling you, oh, it's all fine. Yes, the naked man, Ben Bernanke, running up and down the aisles saying everything is okay. Uh, you know, in fact, it is all okay. Look, when Bernanke's meds wear off, He's going to be like that Coney guy, Coney 2012 guy, running down the street, buck naked, slapping the ground like a gorilla. <laughs> talking about quantitative easing, quantitative easing with his bald head. He looks kind of like a gorilla anyway. The old, you know, alpha gorilla sitting back there, you know, farting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's all he does. He goes in front of Congress and he farts. And he paid, you know, they say, oh, your farting sounds like we're all in great shape. Thank you, Professor Bernanke. <laughs> Let's look at some of the headlines that betray the everything is okay, Bernanke is a consummate professional, he's a hero sort of stuff. Shock slowdown in UK growth as GDP contracts 0.3%. So Britain's economy contracted more than expected in the last three months of 2011, shrinking 0.3% as the country's dominant services sector weakened. And meanwhile, household incomes fell 1.2% and the savings ratio eased to 7.7%. Right, they've got austerity in the UK. And as a result, the economy is crashing. And the GDP is crashing. And the people that, who live there are suffering financial repression. They're suffering horrible economic calamity. And George Osborne and Mervyn King. See, Mervyn King is Ben Bernanke's equivalent over there at the Bank of England. And he likes to sit back. He doesn't have a flatulence problem. He's got a gastrointestinal problem. That's his contribution to monetary policy around the world. And he blabs a few things at some swanky club. But he's basically in the financial repression game. Keeps interest rates artificially low so that grannies, you know, the new George Osborne uh, budget, it, it, it takes more money, five billion pounds more 
from retirees and pensioners and puts it into the pockets of kleptocrats in the city. That's on top of the 45 billion pounds that Osborne and Cameron engineered the theft from pensioners and grannies into the pockets of speculators who, if you're at Barclays or HSBC or the old Lehman Brothers, all they're doing is buying cocaine and shoving it up their nose. That's all they do. Any Friday or Saturday night, go to the city of London, you'll see plenty of bankers on their back, naked, snorting cocaine. Well, let's look at these facts here, because the fact is, here you have the pilot of the economy of the financial sector in the United Kingdom, and they've blacked out the gauge that tells them that there is widespread fraud and money laundering and toxic derivatives that have destroyed their economy. So because of that, he doesn't see it. In fact, the solution offered is the figures could reignite expectations the Bank of England may need to add additional stimulus to bolster growth. Now, isn't this the same exact thing that actually has caused these problems? Yes, it is. It's more debt. It's not cash, it's debt, because the Bank of England has no cash. All they do is they lower the reserve requirement for the entire system globally, which means that they increase the debt load, which means more repression, which means more debt service, which means more necessitation to move billions from the pockets of those who thought they were getting any kind of return in their pension account into the pockets of the speculators. Exactly. So when the pilot does not know and understand and trust his gauges, he often causes a stall midair as that Air France flight from Brazil to Paris that crashed. It was caused by pilot error when they stalled the plane by doing the exact opposite of what they were supposed to do. They pulled up sharp when they should have dove into wherever they were going. Right, and the people in the UK or the US who are suffering as a result, they need to understand that the suffering is being organized by Mervyn King in the UK, Bernanke in the U.S., Mario Draghi in the ECB. Uh, that, that's what they're, that they, under, they have to understand what's going on here. The, the, the enemy is not Al-Qaeda. It's not Iran. It's not anything except central bankers. It's not an enemy. It's what we're saying is these guys are deranged. They're going berserk. They are running up and down our financial, economic, and monetary aisles. They must be tackled and stopped. We, the passengers on this plane, will not stop our central bankers from destroying our economy. Let's look at the results of us sitting there like toads, you know, with nothing to do and letting these guys run amok. The rich get even richer. New statistics show an ever more startling divergence between the fortunes of the wealthy and everybody else, and the desperate need to address this wrenching problem. Even in a country that sometimes seems inured to income inequality, these takeaways are truly stunning. So remember, just like above, we saw stunning, shocking. Oh, we keep on being shocked. How surprised. Why? Because we've blacked out the gauges. Yeah, right. So you're suggesting that these central bankers, they need to be tackled. They need to be stopped. Right, they stopped. need to be stopped. We can't just sit there like passive toads waiting for the plane to go down. Right. Well, OK. So when they, it comes out of the uh, metro system in Washington and it's on the way to the office at the Federal Reserve Bank with a little briefcase, you're suggesting somebody tackle Ben in no, restraint and put I'm, him in a straitjacket and I'm, cart him off to the insane asylum. This is an analogy, and I think, you know, you strap on a parachute and get off that guy's plane. And if it means oh. buying silver, buying gold, or doing something, not to be subject to the mad berserk pilot piloting our plane. I'm with you on that. <laughs> so in 2010, as the United States continued to recover from the recession, a dizzying 93% of the additional income created in the country that year, compared to 2009, a whole $288 billion, went to the top 1% of taxpayers, those with at least $352,000 in income. So to compare this, in the Clinton era expansion, 45% of the total income gains went to the top 1%. In the Bush recovery, the figure was 65%, and now it's 93%. So you see, here is Ben Bernanke, he's in control of the system. What do they do? They put 0%. Who does that go to? Right, the rich people, because essentially, you got to think of it like this. They're arsonists. They're in the lighter fluid business. They burn down a house, and the solution is to burn down 10 times more that number of houses. And by the way, they've got to buy lighter fluid from the same people who sold the lighter fluid to begin with. That's Wall Street. So, of course, they're going to make more money. And then finally, Max, Here's another example of how the government, 
the guys in charge of flying our global economic plane, how they help impoverish the bottom 99%. FHA bailout risk looming larger after guarantee binge mortgages. So the Federal Housing Administration won't be able to earn its way to financial health this year, increasing the chance it will need a taxpayer bailout based on an updated forecast from Moody's Analytics, which provides the agency's housing market analysis. The U.S. government mortgage insurer, which guarantees $1.1 trillion in home loans, had been counting on robust growth in home prices to help rebuild its insurance fund after paying out $37 billion to cover defaults the past three years, according to an annual report to Congress. Right. Well, the thing is, and you touched on it already, is that if the entire globe is deleveraging, if the entire globe is in recession slash depression, then the FHA, what they're talking about here, they're going to be bailing out themselves or some ancillary institution based on the aggregation of more debt. You see, uh, they talk about reserves on the balance sheets. They talk about assets on the balance sheet. They're talking about debt. And every time they talk about a restructuring or a bailout, they're talking about increasing the debt over the assets, which of course are completely impaired. People of MF Global realize this, their assets were impaired, they had no assets. It was a joke and more of this is happening. As you sink deeper down into the muck of asset realization of its non-existence, you come to this. Do you hear that? Did you hear that? I did. That's called gold. At the very bottom of this entire Ponzi scheme are about 30,000 tons of gold in the hands of central bankers, and there's about 160,000 tons of gold in the globe in toto. That's where we're going, and the rest of the world understands it. That's why the central banks are buying it, and that's why countries like Iran, China, Russia are trading it with each other to get out of the Ponzi scheme that is the U.S. dollar. Well, Max, exactly, and as this story shows, the reason the rich got richer in a deflationary environment was because they were able to transfer their bad assets to us, the passengers sitting there like toads on the frigging economic bad dream. Right. Well, they, they pass the bad assets to the banks and the banks pass it to the central banks and the central banks are passing it on to us through austerity measures. And then the, those aren't working. So they're passing it on back to the banks who are then passing it on back to the central banks. And a, every time you go around the circle, you make a fee. So that money goes up to the banker, the terrorist at the top, like Jamie Dimon, terrorist, terrorist, terrorist. Uh, and the cycle continues until you get to, hello, gold. And this is inevitable as night follows day. Stacey Herbert, thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. Thank you, Max. Don't go away. Much more coming your way, so stay right there.